everyone, it's Zizu. 안녕하세요, 여러분. 저는 Zizu입니다. And in today's video, I wanted to talk about my culture shocks in Korea. And this is not in a negative way at all. For me, culture shocks are just surprising things that I didn't think about or didn't experience before. So today I wanted to talk about my top 10 things that surprised me the most. In Korean, to say yes, you say the word ne. But the word ne is very similar to the Dutch word for no, which is ne. And when I was just talking or trying to talk in Korean with my friends or when they were saying ne, I was never sure if they were saying no or yes, which was just really confusing to me. The second one is just really funny to me. In Korea, you have two words for cafe, which is cafe or coffee shop. So the word cafe to me is just a cafe, but coffee shop in Dutch has a very different meaning. Um, it's usually a shop where you can get like something like weed. So when my Korean friends asked me if I wanted to go to a coffee shop, I was just really shocked. I was like, wait, where do you want to go? Uh, but of course they didn't know about this, but they just really went just a cafe. But to me that that was really surprising to hear someone ask me to go to a coffee shop. <laughs> so the third one is within my Korean friends group, I'm one of the oldest. Maybe I am the oldest, I, I'm not sure. Um, but I think I am. In Korea, it's usually the youngest of a group that takes care of the rest. So if you're at a restaurant, the youngest will set the table or fill everyone's drinks. And that's not something I've grown up with. Like my parents raised me to just always help out no matter what. So when I'm meeting with my Korean friends and I try to set the table or help them with something, they just always say, Zuzu, don't do that. We're supposed to do it. And I'm just like, Okay. <laughs> I wish you just really want to help out, but no, I'm, I'm, I'm not allowed. So the fourth is something that I noticed when I was studying in Korea and that's um, at least my friendships with my Korean friends when I was still living in Korea is it was a lot more offline than online. And what I mean with offline is we talked way more when we were meeting face to face or uh, if you went to a cafe or a restaurant. I actually met my friends in Korea a lot more than in the Netherlands. In the Netherlands it's just always like, when do we have time? Yeah, maybe in a month or something like that. So my friendships in the Netherlands is very much online based and it's just not the same as in Korea. In Korea I can just text my friend and be like, hey, I don't want to eat alone tonight. Do you want to have dinner together? And because the transportation system in Korea is so cheap and easy to use. It is so easy to do this. And also restaurants and cafes in Korea are very cheap. So yeah, if I wanted to ask my friend in the Netherlands to have dinner together, it will probably not happen because it is too expensive for them to travel all the way to where I live. And then the restaurant is expensive as well. So in Korea, it's just so much more easier and more comfortable to meet up with friends and to just have a good time. So that was also a very different thing, but I actually enjoyed it more than the way it is in the Netherlands. Uh, I wish I could see my Dutch friends more often, but I mean, the train and everything is just quite expensive. And I also don't really think our transportation system is that comfortable to use. I, it's usually a hassle to me. I don't like it. Whereas in Korea, I really, I really enjoyed taking the subway, for example. Now the fifth, this is something that I have many stories about. It's actually the toilets in Korea. And no, this is not going to be a dirty story. Okay, let's start with first things first. Just like Japan, toilets in Korea can have multiple buttons. And I think actually, this is a funny story, but the first time I arrived in Korea and I went to the bathroom at the airport, I just didn't know how to flush. I couldn't find the button of how to flush, so I actually <laughs> I actually had to go outside of my stall and just be like, Hey, do you know where the flush button is? <laughs> I was so ashamed. But it turns out, usually flush buttons are in the back of the toilet and not actually among all those different buttons. Um, that was very interesting. The second is, 
uh, some toilets in Korea have preheated toilet seats and it's the weirdest thing ever like on one hand it is nice not to sit on a cold toilet seat on the other hand it just feels like someone has been there before you i don't know what to think about that but i've had several toilets like that in korea at the restaurant um with preheated seats it's different <laughs> Korea is like a country that is really upcoming in the economy at the moment But it hasn't always been this way The 1980s I think it was actually a pretty poor country So it is, it's just astonishing to me how they grew as a country uh, But because of this there are still things in Korea that you can notice um, the previous poverty by and one of those things is the old pipelines so not with all toilets you can put the toilet paper in the toilet you have to put it in a special bin to the side I can adapt pretty well so I didn't really mind all that much but it was different and then another thing about the toilet like this is still all 0.5 this is I, I'm not even going to the next point because this is all toilet related but another thing that really shocked me is that in some restaurants or cafes there the toilet roll is not actually at the toilet it is in the cafe and you have to get it in the cafe and then go with your toilet paper to the toilet i thought that was the most awkward thing ever because <laughs> oh, because i just felt so ashamed like i took more toilet paper than i needed because i was just afraid that i would maybe have not enough it just made me very conscious about maybe people watching me how much I was taking and I just <laughs> it was just really uncomfortable to me um, but it happens so if you go to a toilet and there's no toilet paper then the toilet paper might be in the restaurant itself <laughs> and then one other thing this is the last thing about toilets in Korea but um, Seoul is a really big city so there's a lot of people and because of this it happens quite often that the toilet paper in restaurants or in cafes where the toilet paper is actually in the toilet is empty or there isn't any i just always had tissues or toilet paper in my bag so that i always had paper if i had to go and i really recommend if you go to korea to do this as well because there will be toilets where there's no toilet paper and if you've already done your business then <laughs> that's a bit regrettable if you don't have any toilet paper and the same goes for soap um, quite often the soap is empty or there isn't any soap so I would just recommend having tissues toilet paper or um, like a soap or a disinfectant for your hands in your bag um, just to be clean after <laughs> I know toilets are not that special but these things were different than in my country and it just surprised me now talking about restaurants and cafes, usually in cafe you just order and then you go to your seat and you have a little thing and it will beep when your order is ready. But in the restaurant there is actually like a button that you just press and then someone will come to your table and then you can just give your order or ask for something or whatever. And this was different to me as well because in my country you just like hold your hand up like hey. <laughs> Uh, but in Korea, you just press a button and I remember me and my friend were in a Korean restaurant and we were so shy of pressing that button. I know it's just like pressing a button, but it was just so different to us. I, I think one of the things because we were shy of doing this is that we were afraid that if we pressed the button, everyone would look at us and we didn't really want that. Um, but the truth is nobody looks at you. Like if the bell goes, people just keep doing what they were doing they're not just gonna be like oh who's gonna order now <laughs> no it's not like that at all after a few times of doing that me and my friend were like okay so this is just completely normal nobody cares we can just press the button and do our thing <laughs> yeah in the beginning it was just something very new to us then number eight is actually also about a restaurant but it's not about the restaurant itself buying food in korean in a grocery store or at the market can be quite expensive especially if you buy things that are not in season they will be really expensive like for example i really wanted to eat an apple but like four apples was about 10 euros that's <laughs> crazy that's mind-blowing uh, how much that cost but then when it was in season it was really cheap so the price fluctuates a lot in korea of 
um, how much something costs depending on the season but what my friend and I noticed and it depends what you eat in Korea but most of the time eating at a restaurant is cheaper than making the dish at home and I just thought that was crazy because in my country in the Netherlands it is always cheaper to make your food at home than to eat outside it's never the other way around whereas in Korea it is just cheaper I don't know why maybe because more people eat outside than at home I was shocked about that and then the ninth point is actually cafes and convenience stores are open 24-7 uh, in the Netherlands I think most convenience stores close at maybe 10 or 11 maybe uh, and perhaps we have some cafes 24-7 in Amsterdam but it's definitely not a thing that happens often we definitely don't have a lot of cafes that are open 24-7 or convenience stores but in Korea this is one of the most normal things um, I think it also has to do with the fact that there are many students that uh, study at cafes and they even study until late at night but it is so nice like it is so nice if you crave something at night or if you have a little accident and you need something uh it is so nice to go to a convenience store that is still open at that time of the hour whereas in cafes i think this is really cozy transportation in korea um stops pretty early so if you miss the last subway or the last bus and you have to wait until the next one in the morning and you can just hang out in a cafe and be nice and safe and warm and I really appreciate that. I think it was one of my most favorite nights when uh, my friend and I missed the last subway and we just spent the whole night in a cafe drinking. I don't know what we were drinking. I think I was having a white chocolate milk and she was having a bubble tea. And then the last point is something that really blew my mind is that in the summer when it's really really hot in Korea I saw so many people wearing just like long sleeves and long pants and I was just I was like wearing a short skirt and short sleeves and I, I was still dying of the heat and I was just shocked how Koreans can wear long sleeves and long pants I was just like well, if I'm already dying and sweating, then how how do they feel? Like, do they not feel the heat? I can do that, so... Wow. <laughs> I, was, I was just like... Yeah, I, I, w I was pretty shocked about that. And then the funny thing is, in winter, when it's like super cold, below freezing temperatures, there will be lots of Korean girls just wearing short skirts, short uh, dresses. And I was just like packed like in, in multiple layers and i was still so cold but it didn't seem to bother them all that much so i don't know i think koreans are uh heat resistant and cold resistant i definitely can do that like i i'm i'm just really bad with heat and i'm really bad with cold all i can say is i have respect for koreans <laughs> I think one of the funniest things is many students at the university were wearing um, not really flip-flops but like slippers they, they would just wear it during winter like I guess they don't get any cold feet at all <laughs> but just looking at them just made me feel so cold but yeah I, I was really impressed by how Koreans can dress with like the heat and the cold <laughs> So yeah, those were my top 10 culture shocks in Korea. As you noticed, it is not negative at all. Um, to be honest, I didn't really experience many negative things. Like I experienced some, but honestly, I don't think that should speak for everything. For me, so far, Korea has more positive things than negative things. But you know, every country has a negative thing and it's not just Korea or whatever like my country has so many bad things as well uh, besides the good things so personally I just really prefer to focus on the positive side of things but I really wanted to share these culture shocks because I think they're really funny and maybe if you go to Korea for your first time at least you know some things that were 
uh, a culture shock to me so that they won't be as big of a surprise for you later on. I hope you guys thought this video was entertaining. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos, then don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you all in the next video. Okay, bye-bye! <laughs>